Welcome to Hardcore WoW, where dying means you're dead. That is exactly what happened to my gnome warlock in the last episode. And straight after that, I made another character, same class, same race, same sexy beard, and proceeded to speedrun the entirety of Dunmara and Westfall. I died pretty early at level 17, so it only took me 12 hours. But I am now roughly where I left off. Say hello to Grind Stoutmantle, leader of the People's Militia, a military organization focused on defeating the Defy's Brotherhood. Initially, Stoutmantle would send adventurers to turn Defy's hotspots into graveyards, but that wasn't really getting anywhere. He needs to know who's behind it all. To do this, he tells me to go talk to a rogue in Lakeshire. He gives me a note and sends me back to Westfall. I am then told to go to Mephias Shaw in Stormwind, where I am given another note and sent back to Westfall. Again. This is one of those times in WoW where you feel like the side character. Back at Westfall, I now need to find Advice Messenger, who very conveniently passed through the entire fucking zone. Luckily, he is always spawn camped, so I eventually got a tag in Moonbrook. While I was gone, the People's Militia caught a thief trying to steal a wagon. Seriously, you couldn't steal a wagon? In exchange for his life, he would reveal the location of the Defy's hideout. I decided to do dead mines at level 20, just to be safe, and because this is a low level dungeon in hardcore, I assembled a group rather quickly. It consisted of Friskus the Warrior, Big Dick the Pally, Corchase the Rogue, and another rogue called Hyanna Fisher, which from German translates into... Heine Fisher. Why someone would call their gnome rogue Heine Fisher is beyond me. But anyways, we entered the dungeon and... You won't believe what happened. It was really easy. We finished the entire dungeon in under an hour and completed every quest. I got the lavishly jeweled ring, but lost the roll for the Corsair's overshare to the pally. But pent up entitlement aside, this dungeon couldn't have been any better. After all, there were no casualties. The best part about doing dead mines, however, is getting the staff of Westfall. It's a great weapon, even for warriors, that will last no warlock a very long time. At level 20, Warlocks get a new class quest, the Devourer of Souls. This revolves around learning to summon and control my third demon, the Succubus. To do this, Terry Crews tells me to go to Dakar the Seer, which sounds easy, but oh wait, he's in the Barrens. Now I genuinely had no clue how to get there. Without dying, of course. You can't take the boat from Booty Bay to Ratchet, as you'd probably die on the way there. You can't take the boat to Faramore and then swim to Northwatch Keep, because the Murlocs are Murlocs. And finally, the northern entrances to the Barrens are fortified by the border's security. But turns out that by each of these borders, there's a small passage that literally lets you bypass the guards altogether. Kind of sad that I waited 6 levels just for that. But anyways, I finally did the long ass pilgrimage and reached the car's camp. Now in order to summon a succubus, you need to bait it into entering this world of a symbol of love. Luckily for me, Takar the Seer has already found what I seek. In the War of the Ancients, two lovers fell together in battle, and where they took their last breath, a tree known as the Heartswood grew, a symbol of their undying love. The tree in question is now located in Ashenvale and is surrounded by cultists. I beat them up, then I beat up the tree. Don't know why he beat it, this ain't Minecraft. I now need to go all the way back to Stormwind, thank god Hearthstones exist, to begin the summoning ritual. I brought the succubus to the mortal plane and defeated her fairly easily. I must admit though, that over time, she's become my new favourite pet, and it's not for the reasons that you think. She does the most damage out of all my demons, has a decent humanoid CC, and she also doesn't die in 3 hits. She may not be as safe or as tanky as a Voidwalker, but overall, she's a very well-rounded pet. No pun intended. There was another quest from the Warlock camp, this time from Doan Karhan. He informed me of the Orb of Sarn Rook, a powerful item in which a demon was imprisoned. <laughs> it was broken into fragments that now reside among cultists in Black Phantom Deeps and a wizard in Shadowfang Keep. If I obtain these fragments, he'll be able to reform them, creating the ultimate weapon, a 9 spell power staff. Let me explain how amazing this is. Spell power increases the raw damage of your spells, and in the lower levels, finding such an item is extremely rare. So being able to get one from a quest as early as level 20, that's just insane. The only trade-off is being forced to do group content with four other potentially brained NPCs. In hardcore, twice. I first did Black Fathom Deeps, forming a group of two hunters, a warrior and a priest. The dungeon went pretty smoothly, everyone knew what they were doing, and no one pressed all four candles at once. Don't be that person. The tank almost died to Akamai's in rage, but he didn't, so that's a good thing. I got all my fragments and an amazing wand, so for that, this dungeon gets a thumbs up. 
Shadowfan keep kind of worried me though, as the fragment there had a less than 1% drop chance, and because of the hardcore add-on rules, I could only run this dungeon once. This means that if I don't get the fragment by the end of the run, the staff of Saren Rook will never see the light of day. I made another group, this time with two pallies, another warlock and a warrior. Because most of us were vastly overleveled, most of the mobs were grey, making this dungeon extremely easy. This came at the cost of almost no XP gain, but that wasn't what truly mattered. I pulled the first Dark Soul, the only mob that could drop it, and somehow, on the first kill, I got the fragment. The next few bosses were no sweat, and it seemed like yet another quick and easy dungeon run. But then came the wolf room. We were fighting a small pack of mobs, when suddenly, a horde of bloodthirsty worgen charged towards us. At this moment, my instincts kicked in, and I immediately dipped. Kind of shameless, I know, but there wasn't really much I could do, or the entire group in fact. I ran down the spiral corridor and jumped off the wall, all while watching my tank's health bar flicker like a broken light bulb. Then it grayed out. Stompy the healer was next. I stood next to the portal, awaiting the return of any possible survivors. Some two minutes later, I saw Cocklor leave SFK, as well as Raccoon. Once the adrenaline had worn off, we all stood in a circle, contemplating what just happened. We all mourned the deaths of our comrades, but we eventually parted ways. And that concludes the story of the Staff of Saw and Rook. And of course I was pretty happy about that. Sure, two players died in that run, but that's the Warlock fantasy, right? Everything comes at a price. Okay, but for real though, you're probably still wondering, why did the mobs even get pulled in the first place? Well, I was looking back at my footage and what I found was very interesting. Here you can see a fireball flying through my screen that hit a worgen up here in the ramp. This caused the mob to run all the way around the room to get to us, pulling multiple packs of mobs on the way. It would have made more sense for him to just jump down, but you know, 2004 game design. So who aggroed the mobs for fireball then? It wasn't a mage, since there was none. It wasn't my imp, as I was using my succubus, so it must be... Raccoon's imp. Now demons don't really like being enslaved. Shocking, right? So they usually wait for the right opportunity to betray their master. Now Gobmir decided to exploit the scuffed pathing of a 20 year old game, which was pretty smart actually. I applaud that, but as you can see, he failed, so... Fair luck next time, bozo.